tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are in an open boat with three desperate men, 200 yards from land and safety. But while you scream frantically for someone to rescue you, you realize that from the mountainous breakers between you and safety, there is no escape. Listen now as transcribed, Escape brings you Stephen Crane's unusual story, The Open Boat. Eighteen ninety seven. A tale intended to be after the fact, being the experience of four men from the sunk steamer Commodore. They were a captain, an oiler, a cook, and a correspondent. And many a man ought to have a bathtub larger than the boat which they rowed upon the sea. None of them knew the color of the sky. Their eyes were fastened upon the waves that swept toward them. The horizon narrowed and widened, dipped and rose. And at all times it was jagged with waves that seemed to thrust up in points like rocks. A singular disadvantage of the sea lies in the fact that after successfully surmounting one wave, you discover there's another behind it just as important just as anxious to swamp a boat. Keep her a little more south, Billy. A little more south, sir. There's a house of refuge just north of the Mosquito Wind at Light. As soon as they see us, they'll come off their boat and pick us up. As soon as who sees us, Cook? Crew. Houses of refuge don't have crews. Only places where clothes and food are stored for the benefit of shipwrecked people. They don't carry crews. Oh, yes, they do. No, they don't. We're not there yet. The oil is right. We're not there yet. Good thing it's an onshore wind. If not, where will we be? <laughs> now, that's right. <laughs> do you think we've got much of a show now, boys? I don't know, Captain. Oh, well, we'll get ashore all right. Yes, <clears throat> if this wind holds. If we don't, we're down on the surf. <clears throat> Sometimes the gulls would sit on the sea comfortably in groups. Its wrath was no more to them than it was to a convoy of prairie chickens a thousand miles inland. Often they came close. And at these times they were uncanny and sinister in their unblinking scrutiny. Get away! Go on! Get! Get! Get away! Get! Ooh, ugly, filthy things. The captain was hurt and couldn't do anything. The cook bailed. The oiler and the correspondent sat together in the same seat and rowed. And then the oiler took both oars. And then the correspondent took both oars. The correspondent, the oiler. Will you spell me? Yeah, sure. But it was easier to steal eggs from under a hen than it was to change seats in the dinghy. 
The man in the stern slid his hand along the thwart and moved with care. The man in the rowing seat slid his hand along the other thwart. As the two sidled past each other, the cook and the captain kept watchful eyes on the coming wave. Look out! Now steady there! Good boy, Billy. I think I see the lighthouse at Mosquito Inlet. Where? Which way? Huh? Wait, wait. I think I see it too. Billy? Uh, might be. I don't see anything. Look again. It's exactly in that direction. Boy, Boy now I see it. It's real small, like the head of a pin. Boy. Think we'll make it, Captain? If this wind holds and the boat don't swamp, we can't do much else. Bail here, Cook. All right, Captain, sir. All right. The brown mats of seaweed that appeared from time to time informed the men in the boat that they were making progress slowly toward land. And slowly the lighthouse grew larger, an upright shadow on the sky. And then land appeared, thinner than paper. I wish we had a sail. We might try my overcoat on the end of an oar. Give you two boys a chance to rest. I'll try anything. What do you say? Let's try it. Here's my coat. Right, sir. Blow them both down toward me. I'll tie it on. Yeah. Here you go. Maybe. So rope there, Billy. You can lash it better. Yeah. Sleeves will do better, I think. You'll have to hold one oar. You the other. Huh? Okay. Ready? Already. Hoist her. All right. Here we go. Easy. Hey, watch it. Now, hold on. It's steady now. Steady it. Better lower her. What? Aren't we making headway, Billy? You'll swamp this way. She's too far off balance. Hold on. Let's get it down. Come on, down. Take her down. All right. Take it over. That's it. That's it. That's got it. We'll... We'll just have to row. How in the name of all the same could there be people who think it's fun to row a boat? <laughs> you put things right smart. Yeah. I guess it wouldn't be so bad if we'd eaten something before. Yeah. If we got ourselves in a pinker condition before we got ourselves shipwrecked, that'd be better, too. <laughs> Would be. <laughs> There'd be less people drowning at sea. I'll spell you. Yeah. Uh, we can both do it. Take the right oar, Billy. All uh. right. Let's go. Slowly and beautifully, the land loomed out of the sea. And the wind came again. And then went. And then came again, veering from northeast to southeast. Boy, uh, listen. And a new sound struck the ears of the men in the boat. The sweet, low thunder of the surf on the shore. We must be about opposite New Smyra. Yes. I believe they abandoned that life-saving station there about a year ago. Did they? Take her easy now, boys. Don't spend yourselves. If we have to run a surf, you'll need all your strength, because we'll sure have to swim for it. Take your time. Yeah. Yes, Captain. Yeah. That's the house of refuge, sure. They'll see us before long and come out after us. Yeah. The keeper ought to be able to make us out now if he's looking for his glass. He'll notify the life-saving people. Oh, none of these other boats could have gotten ashore to give word of the wreck. Huh? Else the lifeboat would be out hunting us. Yeah, that's, that's right, Billy. That's right. I don't think it'd be wise to try for the lighthouse now. Swing ahead a little more north, Billy. A little more north, sir. Steady now there, Billy, my boy. There she is, Captain. In an hour, perhaps. Maybe two. We'll be ashore. Dry. Fit. <sighs> Want a drink to that, Captain? Yes. You still got the water jug. Well, let's have it around. All hands. Uh, hey. Right, sir. You go ahead. You first, sir. Thank you. 
All right, Cook. Thank you. Uh, Billy? Uh, it tastes good, fresh water. Here you go. Thanks. Oh. Uh, well, since we're celebrating, I got a surprise. <laughs> Look. Cigars. Aren't they wet? Yeah, some of them are. But some of them are dry. I don't know how. Here. I got dry matches. There you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. This is more like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. In another hour. Dry and fed. Cook, there don't seem to be any signs of life about your house of refuge. No. It's funny they don't see us. Yeah. We have to go through that surf. We'll swamp for sure. Funny they don't see us. I suppose we'll have to make a try for ourselves. If we stay out here too long, we'll none of us have strength left to swim after the boat swamps. Uh, right now. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hit us straight in then, Billy. All right, sir. Uh, straight in. If we don't all get ashore, I suppose you fellas know where to send news of my finish. Yes, sir. If I don't get ashore, you boys can tell my old lady what happened. My family lives in New Brunswick. Just ask for them at the Hampton Inn. And if I don't get ashore, <laughs> if I don't get ashore, it won't matter to anyone but me. Hey. Aye, right, sir. It's getting rougher. Shore's still pretty far away. Sir, yeah. we can't go in any closer. What? Boys, she won't live three minutes more if we keep her headed toward shore. Oh. Too far out to swim. Shall I, shall I take her out to sea again, Captain? Yes, Billy, go ahead. Yeah. Take her out to sea again. And the boat with the four men in it. The captain, the oiler, the cook, and the correspondent turned back away from the land and bumped over the furrowed sea to deeper water. We will return to escape in just a moment, but first, just sit back, relax, and watch the cars roll by. Watch the heavy traffic on the highways in the summertime. Watch the traffic jams and the roadblocks and the tired, hot drivers sitting behind the steering wheels of their cars, trying to make time and getting nowhere fast. Just help yourself to a nice, refreshing, cool drink. Sit on your chair on the porch or stoop or lawn under the shade of a big elm tree with your radio tuned to some nice, sweet music, or a thrilling whodunit on CBS radio, and watch the summer rush on the roadways. Gosh, you're smart. And now, back to Escape. When it occurs to a man that nature does not regard him as important, and that he feels she should maim the universe by disposing of him, he at first wishes to throw bricks at the temple. And he hates very much the fact that there are no bricks and no temples. And he finds that nature is serene among the struggles of the individual. She's not cruel, nor beneficent, nor wise, no treacherous. She is simply indifferent. Well, anyhow, they must have seen us from shore by now. Squall coming to the southeast, sir. I see it, Billy. Keep her the way she is. Aye, right, sir. What do you think of those life-saving people? Ain't they peaches? Yeah. Funny they haven't seen us. You think we're out here for sport. Yeah. Maybe they think we're fishing, or maybe they think we're stupid fools. Yeah. Sorry. 
There, sir. St. Augustine? Those dots? No, no, I don't think so. Too near Mosquito Inlet. Did you ever like to row, Billy? No. Did you? Oh, we loved it. <coughs> loved it. Look! There's a man on shore. Huh? Where? There. See him? See him? Yeah, sure. He's walking along. And he sees us. Uh, He's waving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He hey. does see us. He does. Uh, right. Oh, now we're all right. There'll be a boat out here for us in half an hour. He's going on. He's running. He's going up at a house there. He's standing still again. He's looking, I think. There he goes again toward the house. Come on. Come on. He hey. stopped again. Is he? Is he waving at us, sir? No, not now. He was, though. Look. There's another man. Look at him go, would you? He's on a bicycle, a bicycle on the beach. They're both waving at us. There comes something else up the beach. Is it, is it a lifeboat, sir? I think so. No. No. No, it's not a lifeboat. Oh. It's nothing but a bus. One of those big hotel buses. Boy, Thunder, you're right. What do you suppose they're doing with a bus? Why don't they get a lifeboat? Hey, hey. Maybe they're going around collecting the lifeboat crew. That's it. Huh? Yeah. Now keep around into the wind, Billy. Aye, uh, sir. Look, there's a fellow waving a little black flag at us. He's standing on the steps of the bus. And there comes two other fellows. Now they're all talking together. Now look at that fellow with the flag. He sees us all right. He knows what he's about. Hey! Come get us! Come get us! Hey, that ain't a flag, is it? No, it's his coat. Why, certainly, that's his coat. So it is. It's his coat. Who would you look at him swing it? There isn't any life-saving station there. That's just a winter resort hotel. Some of the customers came to see us drown. What's that idiot with the coat mean? What's he signaling anyhow? Sir, it looks as if he were trying to tell us to, to go north. Must be a life-saving station up there. No, no. Hmm. He thinks we're fishing, Billy. Just giving us a wave. That's all we need now, a cheery little wave to send us on our way to eternity. He don't mean anything. He's just playing. Well, if, if he just signals us to try the surf or, or go to sea or, yeah. or wait or go north or go south or go to... There'd be some reason in it, but, but look at him! Why doesn't he stop waving that coat long enough to tell him we're out here dying? Why doesn't he? Oh, it's all right now. They'll have a boat out here in less than no time, now that they've seen us. Yeah. Night coming on, sir. Yeah. Oh, now, now, boys. We'll never have to stay here all night. Now, don't you worry. They've seen us now, and it won't be long before they just come chasing right out at us, eh? Oh, come on, boys. Cheer up now. The shore grew dusky. The man waving the coat blended gradually into this gloom, and it swallowed in the same manner the bus and the group of people. A night on the sea in an open boat is a long night. I'd like to get my hands on that bird who wave the coat. I'd just like to live long enough to do that. Why? What did he do? Uh, nothing. You just seem too blasted cheerful. Keep her head up. Keep her head up. Keep her head up, sir. The obligation of the man at the oars was to keep the boat headed so that the tilt of the rollers wouldn't capsize her. The black waves were silent and hard to be seen in the darkness. And on the northern horizon, a light appeared. A small, bluish gleam on the edge of the world. Captain... Are you awake? I. Shall I keep her making for that light north? I keep it about two points off the port bow. I... Oh. Oh. A gleaming trail of phosphorescence like a blue flame was furrowed on the black waters. It might have been made by a monstrous knife. The speed and power of the thing was greatly to be admired. 
It cut the water like a gigantic and keen projectile never leaving the vicinity of the boat. Ahead or astern or on one side or another, at intervals long and short, flew the long, sparkling streak. Life-saving people take the time. Oh. Did you see the shark playing around? Yes, I saw him. Yeah. He was a big fellow, all right. Yeah. I didn't know you were awake, Captain. Makes no difference. He's gone now. Billy. Huh? What? Billy. Will you spell me, Billy? Why? Why, sure. Cook. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh. Oh. Yes, Captain. We'll take her father out to sea so there's no danger from the surf. You take that oar to the stern there and keep her facing the sea. Right, sir. Call out if you hear that surf just once here. I will, sir. It'll give you boys a chance to curl down for a while and get in shape again. Thanks, sir. And the correspondent and the oiler lay down in the bottom of the boat, trembling with the cold and the damp and chattered themselves to sleep, the dead sleep. Spray occasionally bumped over the side and gave them a fresh soaking, but it had no power to break their repose. And neither knew that they bequeathed to the cook, now the only man awake on an ocean, the company of another shark. Boys. Huh? Uh, Boys. Boys. Day, huh? How does it look? She's drifted in pretty close. I guess one of you better take her out to sea again. Oh, all right, Captain. I'll, no, I'll, I'll do it, Billy. Take it easy. We've been working hard enough. Easy now. Sorry. Well, here we are. I ever get ashore, anybody shows me even a photograph of an oar, I'm gonna break you. Nothing on the beach. No man, no bicycle, no bus, not yeah. even a dog. I guess I'd even like to see that fellow with the coat again. Guess we all would. Well, at least the light tower's still in sight. That I'd rather not see. Why is that? Well, for one thing, I don't think anyone ever climbs up there. If they did, we'd have help. If no help is coming, <sighs> we might better try to run through the surf. When, sir? Right away, Billy. <sighs> if we stay out here much longer, we'll be too weak to do anything for ourselves at all pretty soon. Captain's right. Anything's better than this. Should I, should I head her into the beach, <sighs> sir? Head her into the beach, Billy. <sighs> into the beach, sir. Our boys hear this. She's going to swamp shore. All we can do is work her in as far as possible. And then when she swamps, pile out and scramble for the beach. Yes, sir, all right. Captain. You're hurt. I can swim it all right, Billy, if we get in close enough. Keep cool now, boys. And don't jump until she swamps shore. Aye, sir. Captain, I think I better bring her about. Keep her head onto the sea and back her in. All right, Billy. Back her in. Let's go. I don't think we'll get in very close, Captain. But we'll try. 
and remember to get well clear of the boat when you jump. Bella, bail her out. All right, Captain. Captain, the next one will do us for sure, sir. Here she comes. Mind you jump clear of the boat. The sea pummeled them and spewed them about. It plunged them downward and threw them skyward. And all wondered, am I going to drown? Am I going to drown with the sand and the trees over there? Am I going to drown? And a man came running along the shore. He was in the water in a matter of seconds, pulling the cook ashore first, then returning to help the captain, <laughs> then the correspondent. Oh. Here you go now. Here, grab hold my arm. Oh, I'm hold about it. Take it. done for. No, you're not. Come on now. Come on! Oh, thanks. It's all right now. Thanks. It's all right now. Uh, I thought it was all over. Look! In the shadows face downward lay the oiler. His forehead touched sand that was periodically between each wave clear of the sea. It seemed that instantly the beach was populated with men and flasks, blankets and clothes, and women with coffee pots. But while the captain and the cook and the correspondent took all of these remedies, a still and dripping shape was carried slowly up the beach. And the land's welcome for Billy, the oiler, could only be the hospitality of a grave. Transcribed under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you The Open Boat by Stephen Crane, adapted by E. Jack Newman. In order of their appearance, you have heard William Conrad as the narrator, Tom Tully, the correspondent, Edgar Barrier, the captain, Bob Sweeney, the cook, Dave Young, the oiler, and Jack Carroll, the man. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are in a wild and dangerous country riding to stake your claim while the man who follows you without conscience or fear is waiting for the moment when he will stop you with a bullet in the heart. So listen next week when Escape brings you William J. Radcliffe's exciting story, The Notebook. Remember, the blood you give is vital in building a reserve of gamma globulin for the prevention of paralysis from polio. Call your local Red Cross chapter for an appointment to donate blood tomorrow. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, the Johnny Mercer Show is heard weekday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>